we lost the battle. We lost the battle. Yeah, yeah we did. Bro, I, mean, that, what the I told you, bro. We lost the man for what? Guys, I don't allow this. Can I talk to the head referee? Yeah, but then we might lose oh. second one. <laughs> <laughs> he's very willing to flash forward further as Patrick falls low. Ignar can block these, but he decides against it. And now Ignar's hooked under the tower. There's two for Flackhead. I can shield you again. I'm shielding you. Oh shit. We win, we win. Next side, no flash. Yeah, if you kill by, that's not by. There is still a soul. There is still a soul. Back up. No, 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 Welcome back to the LEC. Patrick, thank you for joining me on the interview. I'm just going to echo what you said because people didn't hear it. You're like, freak. That's the highlight they're showing? Anything on that? Yeah, I mean, this game, we, or at least I got kind of AD dipped, but it's really good that my top side played so well, so we just win, so I'm really happy. All right, before we dive straight into the game, I just want your first thoughts. That was a do or die. You've been in so many of these situations, Patrick. How do you handle it, and then how do you feel once you succeed? I think it's just today our prep was really good. I think we were really happy with the draft and uh, yeah, we just kind of felt confident, you know, playing this kind of style. Uh, I think we had a lot of practice on it, so it was, it was good. I'm very happy you're mentioning the draft, Patrick, because I want to bring it up a little bit. You can see it over there on the screen. We saw three mid lane bans from your guys' side. You were literally targeting Zvera right there. Was that the tactic from the very beginning? Uh, yeah, I guess I think we kind of looked at their team and we we're like, yeah, this guy is pretty dangerous. He's playing real well. So I think we just targeted him and we hope to make him play like a champ that he's not comfortable on. Absolutely. And if I look on the set of Team Heretics, they literally press an R button and someone from your side disappears. When you go into the game and the draft is completed, what was the plan for you guys? Because it must be so difficult for you as a Varus in Mobility Carry to play into the likes of a Vi and an Annie. I mean, I think this comp, they can like throw their buttons on one target, right? But then like two more carries will be there and still like kill them. So I think our plan was just like poke a bit, run back. If they engage, we still win, so. All right, so your thoughts in general, because I saw the Vi first picked right there, B1, and you're like, I don't care. It's going to pick Varus anyway. Mobile AD carry, who cares? What are your thoughts on the current AD carry meta? And why is Varus like such a pretty much blind pickable AD carry all across the world pretty much? I think the, hmm, I just think Varus is so flexible, you know, you can never go wrong with picking him. And I think that's why so many teams just pick him. And I, like for the meta, I think all is good. Just uh, delete Smolder soon and like it's going to be really good, I think. <laughs> now, Patrick, of course, congratulations at 3-0 weekend. You made it into the playoffs. Are there any areas of improvement that you guys are still working on? Because it has looked like a pretty good weekend, but there were a few flops over in the early game. And you said, thank God for my top side, because they bailed us out. I guess one thing to work on is uh, bot lane laning phase. And then maybe we have to stress out a bit less in game, because I mean, we're not that much used to winning, I feel like. So even when we are in a really good position, we are still kind of nervous. So I think we need like, just more stage confidence. Well, talking about stage confidence, Otto was telling me in the interview earlier that he really hopes he gets revenge, revenge onto Trimby for knocking him out of Worlds last time. So he got it, and he also got Kia player of the game. So congratulations to him. That was a magnificent Jace performance in the top lane. Now, of course, moving forward into the best of scenarios, how do you see this going on for the meta that's coming up? You know, you talked about the virus and the smolder, but do you see any significant change on that matter for your bot side? Well, new patch is, I mean, I saw they buff tanks, right? Mm -hmm. And they buff crit AD carries, so I imagine... Jinx time? Maybe, yeah. I mean, I imagine we're just going to be seeing a lot of front to back. Maybe things like uh, Kalista and Varus will go a bit down because of the crit buffs, right? So it's, it might just be boring, to be honest. Uh, boring for you, boring in general. I think just like the games where there's two tanks and two hyper carries, they just last really long, you know, no one can kill anyone, like... I think this meta, except for Smolder, is a little bit better. All right, perfect. Then it will be better meta for you too. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations on to Mickey Playoffs. We're going to throw it over to Medivedi for our next game. And we're back for the next game. Uh, Rogue versus SK. If Rogue win, they guarantee themselves a tiebreaker. If SK win, they lock playoffs. So. And if Rogue lose, they're out. Yes. So they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. If SK lose, they're not guaranteed out. They can still make it through. Correct. So, long the line for mm -hmm. this game. 
Uh, Rogue did successfully take down G2, which was a surprise to some, not a surprise look, to G2 fans. Rogue can beat two teams in the Alex. He can't mind calling G2. <laughs> yeah. It's very strange. They're, they're two and two versus G2, like two wins out of two games. They're two wins out of two games against Carmine Core, and then they're zero and 16, I think, against <laughs> everyone else in the league. So we'll see if their winning spree <laughs> continues <laughs> today, as they are on a one win streak. We're into picks and bans. Rogue on the blue side, Rel, Vi, and Varus band away, whereas SK Gaming have got rid of the Volibear, the Oriana, and the Senna. Callista first picked immediately for comp. Should come as no surprise. Callista, Varus, obviously both high priority, and with Varus taken away, Callista then naturally becomes a high priority. The question is, will Smolder be locked in for Exekick, or will he instead go for something like the Zeri, which has also played a bunch this split? Renata potentially the priority. A bit of a surprise. Does make sense to be denied away from Kalista. The question is, what other AD carries can you pair that up with? Oh, Traditionally, yes, the most common one that we've seen in recent pro play is Renata, Kalista. And yep. pros seem hesitant to pick Renata with other things. Outside of maybe an Ash AD carry that we do see every now and then, which I do think can be a good pick into Kalista. You know what else is quite nice? Draven. Also Let's true. Draven. Uh, Renata Draven, Draven. Draven, very strong. And extra kick did used to play a lot of Draven when he was on LDLC, medic. I want to say. So uh, smart. I mean, I was actually quite smart. Yeah. I myself <laughs> for that one. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, Exekick hasn't played it this split, but was known for it when he was in the LFL. I feel like all of our AD carries were known for Every Draven. Every AD carry is known for Draven. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the AD carry it's the one that used to grind to Challenger, exactly. and then once you're at Challenger, then you play other things. Play something else. <laughs> Sweet. It's either okay. that or Ezreal. Those are the two champs that you can uh, be true. really good at. Uh, now, there. will we see... Well, Rel is obviously taken off the board. Vi is taken off the board. Volibear taken off the board means things like Xin Zhao. Oh, Blitzcrank often used as an answer into these low mobility champions. Does make a lot of sense. Can often pair up very nicely with the Callista. A lot of pick potential. First game for Zoelis this split. We'll see how he does on it as we now move into potentially mid lane. Talia, of course, still up and available. Ari alongside her. Ari has been shifting a little bit in terms of priority ever since more answers have been coming through. Yeah, I'm debating if you want to go mid or jungle, and they do say mid. Karma, Karma in. depresses me. Uh, it's, <laughs> this is a champ that I in game, think. In game. Yeah, she's just very wave glare heavy. Obviously, she's very versatile. She doesn't have the craziest amount of damage, but her poke damage is obviously nothing to snuff at. Um, and she provides a huge amount of utility and is all around just a very solid mid lane pick that just pretty much always guarantees you mid lane push. SK deciding they want to pick jungle instead does mean now that they get to ban out junglers and Rogue gets to ban out mid laners, but the mid lane pool is slightly harder to pinch, I think. Talia, Ari, probably up there in terms of unlikely bans. Jarvan taken away by SK. I think I would consider a Nico. Yeah, Nico makes uh, sense as well. Nico, because you think what enables the Xin Zhao best. Mm -hmm. Nico is a really good champion. Ari is very early game, if you go for it. Uh, they may even consider her Hui. Oh, Hui. Hui. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to deliver it like that. Uh, but yeah, Talia, Nico would be my bands if I'm on Rogue, because I think that they complement things like Xin Zhao the best and offer you a little bit more scaling. Xin Zhao, your hair looks lovely today. Yes, it, exactly. Um, SK banning out pretty good answers into the Xin Zhao. Yeah. Jax being taken away from uh, Markoon, and then also Jarvan, just a really solid engage champion. Mm -hmm. Now you're looking at things like maybe Viego for Markoon. Uh, maybe he's a little bit cautious because of how squishy this champion is. Maybe you want something a little tankier, like a Sejuani, but then your mid jungle isn't the strongest, but it does give you fairly solid frontline. Surprised to see the Gnar ban actually come through from Rogue. Does suggest that they're thinking about something like a Cassante top or something relatively safe, maybe even a um, Aatrox yeah. for Finn. He did talk about how he performs better when he feels like he's on a carry. So perhaps that's what they're thinking about. Ooh, the way is locked in, Betty. Good call on that. Rogue now looking jungle top. Uh, you do want something relatively safe in the top lane. You could, of course, flex the Karma there. We expect to see it in the mid lane, just looking for that mid lane push. But there's always that possibility, depending on what SK pick on five for their top lane. Could be a Renekton angle as well. Yeah. For Rogue. Viego Renekton, I don't mind too much. Um, I think Gragas will They're flexing around a lot right yeah. now. So they're actually going to go Gragas top, I believe. I'd be surprised if they put Gragas jungle and then. I mean, they could have picked this because of the flexibility it provides. You can still play Gragas mid. And perhaps they're saying, well, if SK give us a really good Karma top angle, 
we'll just put the combo into the I top. I just can't one. see Larson playing Krag. I mean, I'm not saying that yeah, he can't true. play it. I just, uh, I know that players have their tendencies and definitely doesn't fit into Larson's wheelhouse, would be my expectation. And Cassante gonna round out the draft for Irrelevant. We know that he's a very good Cassante player. We saw it in playoffs last year when they had that very epic bout against Fnatic mm. in a best of three. A very enticing back and forth where Irrelevant completely popped off. I would say Irrelevant struggled a little more this split. Yeah. Definitely some uncharacteristic mistakes from him where he's been caught in side lanes, being caught out of position. Yeah, agree. Um, he definitely hasn't had the same performance that he had in winter, but uh, Today he needs to. SK looking to try and lock in their position in playoffs. A win here would guarantee it. Four wins is all you need. Rogue fighting for survival. You say that if they win, they guarantee a tiebreaker. Yep. But their their destiny not really in their control at this point. No, but I mean, if they're guaranteed a tiebreaker, they just have to win the tiebreaker. So it is still kind of in their control. They're not destined to lock in in their control, but they can at least make sure they have at least one more game to play. We'll see if Rogue are able to win this. Of course, they did beat G2 on Saturday. It's the last time we played. Uh, but they have been struggling to beat anyone else in the league. SK, off to a strong start in winter, have struggled in spring to really find that same form. Has felt like a lot of the players not quite on the same page, but I really think we know what page of the book we're opening here, Betty. The journal says on page 27, go to bot lane. And I think that's what's going to happen for both these teams. Very likely. Draven, Renata, Callista, Blitzcrank. It's going to be an exciting one. Bloodshed in the bot lane should be the name of the game. Scaling mid lane mages and some high damage junglers. Both compositions very similar. Different degrees of utility, slight variations in how they want to execute their draft. But all in all, as you rightly said, it's going to come down to the bot lane. Exekick versus Comp. Who can be the carry that their team needs today? Both of them have had times when they have been the carry for their teams. You, know, you look back at comp over the years, for a while actually was seen as one of the best, if not the best, AD carry I in remember. Europe. Had a, a really good summer, I want to say 2022. Was it, it? it was exceptional. It was 2022, wasn't it? Exekick, when he joined the league, him and DOS were tearing up bot lane. They were absolutely destroying last year for SK, has really struggled to have the same impact as Zoli steps forward here. Flash hook just to burn. Ooh. Didn't even need to flash that hook deceptively long. Just the tip. Press this skin. You. Yeah, I mean, iRobot did get some of its animations changed since it was... Uh, I was convinced this skin was competitively bad. It was, and then they got some of its animation changes changed. Oh. Uh, same with like Steel Tempest Lux, I think it was. Where things were just a little bit hard to see. Fair enough. But yeah, all the Blitzcrank skins seem to have a longer Q hitbox than I. When, when I'm playing them, they have a really short Q hitbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when the opponents are playing them, it's like four inches longer than I thought it no, would be. No, I totally get that, yeah. Yeah, it's really frustrating. Um, same thing where like, I watch a pro play a champ and they do all this damage and then I play that champ and I don't do that damage. Yeah. And it just, I feel like that they're playing it's a the different game. It's the servers. It, you're yeah. right, that makes sense. 10% increased damage. It's like uh, Elden Ring Reforged, right? Yeah. Yeah, everything does 10% more damage. Yeah, they have yeah. different spells. It's the same thing as like loser's cue, right? It's mm -hmm. all just mm -hmm. big conspiracy. Uh, 100%. Yeah, makes sense. But yeah, X-Kick burning his flash really makes it hard for him and Doss to be the aggressors in this bot lane. You say that, they are pushing mm -hmm. <laughs> without a care in the world. However, yeah. comp wasn't auto attacking. So I think Rogo accepting the push. And I mean, then you kind of have to because it's Renata, right? Yeah. Like Blitzcrank only has his hook, and once he uses it, he's not a champion at level one. <laughs> so basically, all you have is the threat of a hook. Yeah. And uh, until you get to level two, which really doesn't get that much better. No, you have your <laughs> knockup as well. True. But uh, yeah, so you're kind of just forced to play defensively. Top lane Finn getting some nice trades, but it's really just two tanks slapping away at each other. You expect Finn to have a bit of prior just because he's got slightly stronger wave clear than the Cassante. Slightly better sustain as well with the Drunken Rage. Oh yeah. Uh, passive giving you a bit of extra... And then mid healing. is just wave clear. It mm -hmm. really is just what you're seeing on your screen right now. I think the common pushing on uh, Hui is QE. Yeah, Molten Fisher. Yeah, yeah, the Molten Fisher, yeah. And then you can also use um, the... <laughs> This is crushing not more. I call it the sucky one, this one. Yeah, the E, 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 <laughs> the, the e, e, e yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can help gather at the minions, and that just helps you with the wave clip. Yeah, I find um, Molten Fisher will often get just the the casters a little bit above 
dying, so then you're crushing more of the casters and yeah. you know, it just kills them You off. can also put the W skill on, which I've forgotten the now. The W skill. W-E, W-E, yeah, I think. The, <laughs> I know the one you mean. It's, um, oh, Markoon ganking bot lane. Oh, here we go. Nope. Nope. It's uh, Stirring Lights, because he has those three Will-O-The-Wisps around him. Yeah, so it's... W-E, gives so you, you mana do, back. You do W-E, you do E-E, Q-E. You do E-E first, not... Well, you could. You I mean, it's all the same. I'd QE first, and then I'd EE, I'll be honest. All right. Well, the point is, that's how you clear waves on the way, for those that cared. <laughs> I mean, people do care, buddy. Oh, hang on. Mick Gank. Nisky. Rooted with the focus resolve. There's the Spectral more follow-up stun. Nisky flashes oh, away, oh. but the flash chase from Markoon will be Tower. enough. He survives nice. as well. Nisky dies, burning his summoner. Well played by Markoon. You know... I was critical of Rogue this whole season. Yes, for justifiably not doing so. Yes. Markoon has come alive. In the G2 game, in this game, he is ganking like a madman. And he finds first blood for Rogue, finds the play in mids, forces the flash out from Niski. And now Niski is sitting duck for a future gank. Does, of course, still have the fear, has the crushing more, but if he's using that to wave clear, you no longer have your torment abilities, Larson. Ooh. I mean, the minions were kind of body blocking. <laughs> I love the fact that he throws a thumbs up at that one. <laughs> yep, I missed. My bad. I missed on purpose, Nisky. It was about sending a message. I didn't need to. I just wanted to show you that I could. The, the, the message I sent was, my hands aren't that good. <laughs> like, obviously, Larson, very skilled at the game, but uh, I'm not sure that's the sort of message you but want to be sending miss, to your lane okay? opponent. Happens to everyone, Medic. It's true. If anything, it just proves that Larson's not a bot. Mm -hmm. We're all human deep down. We all make mistakes. So you hit that one. Yep. Does that prove Niski's not a bot because he didn't dodge it properly? or? It's just the whole, am I a robot thing, you know, click the button. Am I a robot? <laughs> They're just doing captures in the middle of the game. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Niski getting the push here in the mid lane has gone back and got himself that tier. We'll stack up the Seraph. So at least looking for the hook and lands it on Dos. Dos has a flash, but I don't really think he... <laughs> Wants to use it, doesn't expend it. Comp gets his first kill of the game. That hitbox. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> I want to get a replay of that if we can get it, because I was like DOS that I didn't think that was going to hit. But uh, I think also it looks deceptively long because Zoe got moved back yeah. as well. Uh, but okay, fair enough. Two kills now for Rogue. They found it in bot lane, they find it in mid. In a really good spot in this early game. Isma going to steal away the... Uh, Krugs? The Krugs, that's the word I was looking for. In the bot lane, but there is no bot lane to gank. SK, not really finding much off the back of this. A small gold lead starting to mount in favor of comp. About a thousand gold ahead across the board, SK. Extra Kick does have 126 stacks on the Draven. Wait, See on his uh, in kill range, isn't he? Oh, nice. Real E there to bounce back irrelevant. As the grubs were secured, Isma now going to make his way towards this dragon, lock this one up for his team. They have their eyes on top lane. Rogue pinging towards the Cassante. Larson has moved out of mid. I will say I am a little surprised. Very rarely do we see Larson roam. Yep. But he gets back in time to get the minions, and that's the important thing. Scales it up, Markoon looking for a red buff steal here, knowing that Isma was on the dragon can wait for this red buff to spawn. Obviously, Isma can come out, but Larson's going to get the push in mid because Nisky's reset. Finn has the push in top because he TP back into the lane. So, Markoon knows that he has the support of his teammates. If anything does begin, there's the red buff stolen away. Isma level six has been able to farm up a little bit more than Markoon, but still, Markoon will be very happy with that red buff steal. And for anyone wondering about the Blitzcrank hook, and why sometimes it can seem like it's missing, but it actually hits in the end. I want to introduce you to a wonderful concept called lollipopping, which is where on a lot of the skill shots in the game, what will happen, uh, just demonstrate it here, is the skill shot will come in like this, Vedius, and you yeah. think it's only going to hit the point, but actually what it does is it hits an AoE around the point. When did Lollipops. you get these... Graphics enabled. Ah, uh, you know, I asked that, but he was like, yeah, of course we can. Just for your lollipopping point, Betty. A uh, medic. I may have worn a mask of your face because I'm pretending to be an analyst. But yeah, a lot of the uh, hook skill shots in the game will have these little lollipops at the end, so it checks in an AoE around where the end of the projectile is to see if it That was hit. the most obnoxious arrow I've ever seen. What, which one? This one? <laughs> but it's, look at the, these are the minions that you want to kill, Betty, and then if you kill them, they blow up. 
That's, that's how weak you should use his abilities. <laughs> You're making the fans really happy Woo! with that one. Good job. <laughs> this is a very serious game, Medic. <laughs> <laughs> Isma looking for the seal here. Markoon backs away. Isma can get the smite, but Markoon gets it instead. And now Isma is going to be collapsed on Zoe Lee's coming across. Isma flashes. Zoe Lee lands it. It's a great example, Benny, of Lonnie popping onto Isma as he's caught across the wall. The bailout comes down onto him and he comes back to life. Dust kills off Zoe Lee's and Isma's able to survive. And I'm a little bit angry at myself for using the meme graphics during this fight. Because SK get two. Exa gets the execution. And SK get back into the game. Very nice response there from SK. Isman looked like he was in some dire straits, but his team is able to offer support. Exekick picks up a kill, he cashes in. And hopefully in the replay, we can see how much gold he was actually able to get off that. He was about 150 sacks, we're gonna say 300 gold off. So Isma looks like he's getting collapsed on here. Nice flash, really great hook from Zoli. The ultimate buys huge. time, and then as you rightly said, the bailout gives him enough time for the execute to come in. Oh, actually, I thought it was the ultimate from Execute. Yeah, Execute kill. kills comp afterwards. So. Yeah, it was this flash over the wall. See how much gold he ends up picking up. 300 plus 533. So 833 gold in total. He's going to be happy with that one. Yeah, it's 2.5 times the amount of stacks you have extra gold, so... Claps coming in mm. from the coaching staff. Swiffer, not overjoyed as of yet. He's been in this position before. Now, Ro, can you find a way to turn this game around? Grub's going to be started off. The Draven being as strong as he is is scary. It's You look at the gold difference, pretty much exactly the amount of gold that he earned in that last fight. Grabbed himself the Sheen as well. Irrelevant hovering around. Don't think he's going to be able to contest these. Dragon spawns in a minute and a half. They've got enough time to go and contest the Drake if they want. Comp and Zoe Lee's hovering around the mid lane. Niski has his flash back up. Exekick doesn't have his. With the wave kind of in a neutral state down towards bot, I think Comp and Zoe Lee's were just a little bit worried that Isma could be down here. They didn't have any vision, so they can't really step forward in this lane. They'll wait for it to push in. They even go the safe way back because someone could be lurking in the tri-bush to catch them out. Doss now six has that hostile takeover. Wave is going to push and Comp and Zoe should be able to farm it relatively safety, safely underneath their turret. Isma has his eyes on the bot side of the map right now. Makes the kick and Doss were able to get that push in. Irrelevant will have TP for this next fight and Finn does not have his, so... But I think Finn is aware. He's going to look to interrupt that base. Yep, he's done that. <laughs> so relevant space going to be denied a little bit as Isma steals away the Raptors. Bot side of the map though. Oh, oh Exa, oh. no flash. He will have the bailout here, but will it be enough? Hotel take up becomes in and Markun dodges over it. Exa just a little greedy in his positioning and Zoe Lee's punishes him for it. Now the collapse is going to start from SK. Isma behind the wall here as Markun on the Draven. Good heartbreaker across. Isma goes in. Crescent Guard, there's the TP in by Larson. And Isma will fall as well. SK just donate themselves into the fight. But the spiraling despair is enough to catch one. Zoe Lee falls to it. A nice response from Rogue. Once you see the Isma collapse, SK looks very scary in that position, but they've lost a major damage dealer, so they just turned their attention. The TP timing from Larson was clutch because it forced the backline to immediately retreat, leaving Isma isolated to allow for Rogue to secure that kill. If it weren't for Niski's burst, it would have been another two kills in favor of Rogue, uncontested, but they end up getting one back. The gold remains largely dead even. The dragon pings are coming through, though. SK want to secure that for themselves. Can the hook connect? No, Ooh, not quite. That one was close. It was. And the issue for SK is that Markoon is now getting big on this Viego 201. The dragon will be given up. Didn't really have the time to set up vision around here once again. But especially when you have a comp that can pick out and isolate an individual member, it's so much easier for a Viego to get resets. And that's where he really thrives. After he gets his first reset, oh, yeah. steals away a bunch of spells, then gets another reset with a Heartbreaker. He, he basically just has three times as many spells as anyone else in a fight. He can just cycle through them. So. It will be difficult for SK unless they can kill off Markoon early or unless they can avoid being displaced and caught out by Rogue. Isma coming across towards his red buff. Markoon stole the last one. He's got his own and Isma repays the favor by smiting that away. Hits him with the Mad Lions logo. Plate can be secured for Finn in top lane. No objectives to play for right now. Rift held in a minute's time. Items should be coming through for a bunch of people. You look at the scoreboard beneath and you'll notice that uh, Everyone is very close to their first item if they haven't already completed it. And ultimately, we find ourselves in a very even game. Exekick's flash is going to be up for the next fight. 
but we mentioned earlier, both compositions very similar in terms of how they play, a very aggressive bot side of the map. Um, a little bit more utility overall from uh, the Renata, but a lot more pick potential thanks to the Blitzcrank. You contrast the mid laners, obviously get strong poke mages, a bit more versatility in terms of what Huey can provide just because of the sheer number of skills that he has, uh, in contrast to the Karma who just provides that valuable sheeting, shielding rather, and uh, the poke that's going to keep coming out from those mantra cues. And the junglers, high damage threats with tanks in the top side. So both comps very similar in terms of their approach. Ultimately, their execution will slightly vary though when it actually comes down to the fighting. I'm wondering how Rogue get through Irrelevant in fights. Obviously, you know, Markun, if he's given enough time, can slowly whistle away the Kassante, but with Koenig, Rukun, Finn and Larson aren't going to be doing too much damage to that top lane tank. They've been caught out here. Well, let's see how much Markun can do. Irrelevant gets up towards the wall, has the all-out path maker. Tries to all out, wonder out, but it's killed by Markun just in time. So I've seen now how the Kassante will die, and the answer is, well, Markun will just kill him. Well, so the advantage is, yeah, the... Oh, calm. They're not they tied dropped. Hook. No. Nope. much yet. Heal is burnt from Exa Kick. The Ignite as well uh, from Doss. But the, the advantage that Rogue have is the mixed damage profile of top and jungle, right? Yeah. Kassante hyper-indexing into building... Oh, that's the ultimate for Miski. Smiling Despair. Arson has to try and get away. Flashes from the wind becomes like the damage Miski onto Miski. He's standing in that Mantra queue for a while. That damage will eat away at you. TP used Markun's to the top looking side at by mid lane. Yeah, it could just be a Rift Hell drive by here. I love Rift Hell drive bys. It's not going to beat. Markun has the hard break. A flash back to more. Doesn't even need. Makes it look easy. Well played there from Larson. In a two versus one, he is forced to flash away. The mid tower is, sorry, the bot tower is going to drop in favor of SK. But you help for yeah, you yeah. definitely do. Why not? You know you have the tempo advantage. Three members bot side. Ride that in. You could probably get a second charge off, with, I with think. With six mites, I think you just kill this tower. Yeah, you do. Melt through it. Six grubs. The more grubs you have, the more mites spawn out of the Rift Herald. You could look for an extra charge or ride think, it in, but I yeah, think you the, just, the Herald was charged exactly. by itself. You just want to push this wave in. Larson can then reset after he secures that. And then just let the Herald do its thing. If it Swiping dies, it it's not the end of the... Punching its shadows. <laughs> What ghosts are in Herald your pastor himself that you're okay. <laughs> Nice damage. Overall, great play from Rogue and a really good punish. Niski needed to base, I think. I mean, I don't think Niski could have done much to protect that mid-tower. Yep. The Herald was likely going to be dropped there regardless. Um, but just a great awareness from Rogue of how they can convert that Herald into a push in mid. And now they've secured themselves a pretty healthy lead. 2k is their advantage. This Karma already working on what looks to be either the Crypt Loom or the Void Staff. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I like Crypt Bloom on Karma. I think it's uh, pretty powerful. It gives you that huge healing burst as well throughout the fight. So it depends what you want, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, buddy. We'll see which one he decides to go for. So well, he's flash hook. Niski flashes it. That's a flash yeah. gone though from yep. Niski. Control mages are that. The flashes are obviously very vulnerable. Markun building a lot of damage. Ultimately, Rogue are playing this map quite patiently, but they're taking a lot of control where they can, cross-mapping. They have their eyes on this Adder Tower in top lane. We expect Dragon to be the next point of contention. Rogue right now don't look like they want to contest it, but SK are not in a position to cross-map. They're hovering around to try and protect Niski in the event of a dive. He does have the TP. It's all about the pings into the mid lane control. Look at this, Exakick saying, we need to get mid, we need to push this wave so we can move into the bot. River. Drake up in 10 seconds. But Larson clearing out this wave as quickly as he can. Mantra Q, that's going to disappear. Markun going to gain access into the river. Maybe they can catch Irrelevant here. That's the Q3. Yeah, Markun is a bit paranoid it. about it. I really feel the Drake is just going to go over to SK. It's strange to me that Rogue decided they don't want to fight it when it puts SK on soul point. Maybe they just don't think they're quite strong enough yet. I mean, the thing that confused me was that Klop... Klop? <laughs> Klop <laughs> actually stayed top, then yep. moved into the river, and then moved back, back to top. Again, yeah. I thought that they had decided at this point that they were going to cross map, so why didn't he just stay? Uh, in any case, it does end up being a cross map. Add a tower top in favor of the dragon. Comp should be able to walk this wave all the way in towards the tower and give Rogue the ability to put this deep vision towards the top side of SK's jungle. They're going to contest this red again. again. Credit to them. They've consistently put threat on this one. The nine from Isma. Oh. Great hook there. Yeah, it's caught the out. There was a ward Isma. there. It looked blind because we toggled the fog of war, but there was a ward there spotting Isma. And, uh, 
Rogue able to get the hook, force the flash, as you say. Larson almost at his crit bloom. He's got the Fiendish Codex. I overlooked that before, so obviously we'll be going, well, most likely going towards the crit bloom, unless he decided he just likes Fiendish things. And uh, there it is. Comp stopped on his base, the Whirling Death. Nice axes, yeah, 217. That execution range, pretty high. Mm -hmm. But two okay. items on Marcoon as well Titanic Hydra and the Kraken Slayer. It's going to be one of the key damage threats. Finn now finishes the Seraphs, has the Rod of Ages at five stacks. Baron up in a minute and a half, and Rogue investing most of their time in getting top side presence. I mean, so you would expect at this point the teams to be cross mapping, so Rogue should really be moving bot. Saying like, hey, we want this last out of tower, and SK's like, oh, we want the top out of tower. I'm a little confused as to why Rogue right now are trying to like contest this top side vision, because I don't really think there's much for them to play for. Baron is spawning in a minute's time, so maybe they're sending it for that, but I'd be very surprised if they just wanted to try and rush this. They have mid control. Now we look at the minimap, and you can see, okay, now they're moving more towards the bot side of the map. Comp and Zoelise getting that push. Irrelevant has to recognize that he's on the weak side, and this is very much what I expected. Uh, Larson moving to top because he knows he's safe, he's on Karma, uh, he has the TP to join any fight, and he shouldn't be in any danger. He's moving down to the river. He's now going to move his pressure over to mid so that he can catch that wave, keep things pushing. Finn just going to give away his farm, kind of as you'd expect, to make sure that Comp can get it. Should tick over to level 11. There it is. And SK, in an ideal world, now they want to be pressuring that top tower, but they're very behind in tempo right now because bases have already come through from Rogue, so at least already making his way back out onto the map. And now contesting that top tower is going to be a lot harder, especially with the wave clear that Larson has. He's in a position to contest. He just has to be cautious of that because he knows that he is on the weak side. So ultimately, advantage gain for Rogue now. The Baron is up. But again, this isn't necessarily the objective you want. You're now thinking about Dragon once again because it's Soul Point. So SK, I don't expect them to invest too much vision here. They're mainly clearing out their jungle. They want to make sure that they sweep through their bot side jungle for any potential flank wards. Gragas as a flanker can be terrifying. So you want to make sure that you've cleared everything out. We see on the minimap. Let me just highlight it for you one second. Right, you can use the arrow, man. Right, hang, on, the hang arrow. on, hang on, hang on. No, I've got to bring right. this up. And then, so you can see these wards right here. Um, <laughs> The these, potential, <laughs> these potential flank wards <laughs> <laughs> coming in from Rogue. That's what you've got to be cautious of if you're SK. Isma not actually going to sweep those out. Oh, they're going to start oh. Baron off. Okay, yeah, I respect this the from Rogue. King, Titanic Hydra and the Kraken Slayer. Thing coming across as well. The control ward goes down. Irrelevant now is going to try and check it, but he doesn't have a ward. He's hooked in, and this is all they really wanted out of it. Pull the Cassante in. Pull anyone in. Hotsar takeover. Not quite going to connect as Markoon still on the Baron. Finn on the front line. Still has the explosive cast. Markoon. Stops a heartbreaker there to get out of the Cassante, and now with 3,000 HP, there's the explosive cast. Doesn't hit Isma. Isma can still look for the steal, but can't find a way into the fight. Rogue get the Baron with a minute still on the Drake. They have full time to reset and set up their vision on the bottom side. I mean, credit to Rogue. They just forced that one. Yep. Uh, the the nature of this Baron means that even though they've set all this vision up around the river, it doesn't actually give them that much information. This does a really good job of uh, both offering information with unique wards, but also denying. And this control ward completely mitigates what they can see. Irrelevant gets caught out. He is not tanky enough to survive four members. He loses his life. SK quick to try and respond, but Finn on the front line trying to disengage. And Irrelevant caught completely unawares. Rogue looking to keep their playoffs hope alive. SK could lock the spot in playoffs with a win here. A loss does not lock them out, but it definitely makes that race that much scarier. Importantly, a win doesn't lock Rogue into playoffs. It does give them at least a tiebreaker. However, they can still get to playoffs guaranteed if other results go their way with a win. If they lose, they are out. There is no way they can get to the at least three win threshold that we are going to have for those tiebreakers. Rogue is looking good right now. Love yep. that Baron call. Great decision from Markoon. I guess they decided at two items, we can kill this super fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, they it's just... Kraken's like Ginsu's Blade of the Ruin yeah. thing, right? Like... I do love this Viego build. I think it has so much potential damage. Up so next, we have Fnatic versus Mad Lions. Koi Mad Lions, Koi, who are struggling in the bottom of the standings. Fnatic still fighting for that top spot with Heretics losing earlier today. I'm sure they'll be looking very hungrily at that 7 and 2 scoreline. Marku start Markoon starting up the dragon will be able to get it. Irrelevant still just stepping forward here. Comp starting to dash away. Irrelevant continues to chase forward. Pathmaker out, looking for at least a slow here. Pops the all out on Comp. Fate's call will bring Zoelise back, and Irrelevant just sprinted at them. And uh, 
Here comes Gragas. Yeah, I've seen more effective sprints on a school sports day. The continuation of Rogue. Like, SK were just all at odds and ends. They were all over the place after Irrelevant tried to chase down Comp and Rogue very happily accepted the, the free gift of the kills there. I mean, poor coordination from SK to force that fight. They, it looked desperate. Irrelevant just sprinting at the AD carry. Already. And uh, Rogue just, they shut him down and they collapse on the fight. They're going to unlock this base 23 and a half minutes in. I mean, the thing with that fight as well is, like, you're against six grubs, you're against the Baron push. Do you need to invest that much, SK? Because now you're going to lose double inhibitors off it. Maybe you could have held back, tried to just clear out and only lost an inhib or so. Rogue just entirely break open the base. There's four minutes on the Baron for them. They have super minions pushing in bottom and mid, and they, they've done a very good job of capitalizing on their enemies' mistakes and playing the game well until this point. But this, this is really a mistake from SK in my mind. I mean, you see the idea, I guess, credit to Larson. Look at Larson yeah. on the back line. Kind of the unsung hero in this fight. They're trying to run them down, and Larson saying, absolutely not. I will deny you access. A barrel to hit onto Exekick to further isolate him. Niski and Isma immediately on the retreat. I don't even know if I can call that a fight. It was more just systematic destruction on the side of Rogue, tearing them apart. You can see their coach, Freddy, enthralled. You see the... Uh Coughing baby versus hydrogen bomb memes. No. <laughs> you haven't seen them? That, that, that's a good example of a coughing baby versus a hydrogen bomb there. The explosive cast. Doing quite a lot of work for uh, poor Rogue. They are now 10,000 gold ahead or nine. They can push in this top lane. Baron buff has fallen off them. They have two and a half minutes before the Baron does come back up. Super minions on their way in the bot and mid lane. Yeah, they're looking to try and get the push in this wave right here from this angle. Uh, <laughs> try and get some pressure up from over here. Yeah, and then what they really want to do, Betty, is uh, they take this tower and they just, uh, oh, wait, you've moved the thing. Take the tower and it just goes, boom. Yeah, you know, wait, wait, there's another one we can add plan. on to that. Well, here we, we are. Do we have more? Yeah, here we are. This, way. <laughs> tower time. <dies>. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, Rogue keeping pressure in mid lane to try and force SK away from that top objective. Niski, chunk nice away. Nice poke away there from Larson. Death cap very close, but I don't think he's going to have time to finish it. Comp with the ulti. Cool. It's more just to force SK back. Harkoon takes the tower. Super minions in the bot lane now have to be dealt with. Super minions in the mid lane about to pass past that inhibitor line. Marcoon only has one minion, can just use it as a way into the base, decides against it. Larson still looking for damage on DOS. Exekick and Irrelevant dealing with the supers in mid. Marcoon now clearing out the wave. Rogue will likely join him as this next wave crashes towards that tower. No face call for them. A little while makes it a tiny bit trickier, but when you're 9,000 gold ahead, things aren't really too difficult. Oh. As the hook lands onto Isma, he uses the crescent oh. guard, then he's knocked back with the explosive cask. And the displacement from Rose Comp is absolutely devastating. Marcoon was hit with the hostile takeover, but this takeover not working as intended. They don't need to base it. They can just keep the pressure up. Look at all these super minions and the poke. They're still very healthy on the side of Rogue. TP to the minions here to try and make them invulnerable so that they can tank those super minions a little bit longer from Irrelevant. It does that and another hook. The golden hand of God from Zoelise this game. He has not missed. Him and Maradona have a thing in common, it seems, is it is Zoelise's hand that has sent SK packing. They do still have a chance at playoffs, but it is likely they will have to play a tiebreaker game, at least. Rogue keeping their destiny in their own hands as they lock up Exekick once again. And Rogue, for the first time this year, have beaten a team not named Carmine Core or G2. They did it in clean fashion as well, a 27-minute victory. Markoon having a great performance today and against G2. It really feels like that he has just come alive. Been making a lot of stuff happen in the early game for Rogue. And overall, an impressive performance. They fight for that spot in the top eight. They bring themselves the three wins and they make that bottom of the table incredibly close. Fnatic and MDK are going to be coming up next yep. and that game is going to be crucial for both the top and the bottom of the standings. MDK with a win obviously will make them way into playoffs. Fnatic looking to lock up that top spot for themselves. But for this game, you can vote for your key player of the game at LEC on X, Marcoon, Comp and Zoelise. Zoelise has struggled, I think, this year, but this game really showed his pedigree. We're going to go to a short break. We'll be back with Marcoon and Finn on the desk after that.
I think Madlands didn't play as well so far. At the same time, I think we are playing better than we were playing last split, so I would say that we should be the favorites. Humanoid slides forward, still has the Empress Divide in the flash, but he doesn't need either. Humanoid is so damn big. We've been missing a bit of confidence because we lost a lot of games in a really bad style, so I think this win can help us to get some confidence back. I don't care about that, Orient. I don't care because Super's unleashed. It's fire again. Mad finally get a bit of a charge in this split and won't be defeated today. It's like do or die. If we use play as we know, we will win. And if we don't win, it's something ice again that we can learn at least. In playoffs, we are still able to win it all. So I'm really confident that we can turn it around. Azark wants to try and disengage, but he already used the offensive flick back. Oh! It's still humanoid, baby! He played better than me in our series. So I would like to show him who's the better player. Freely using Kazarina's cook. Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Care freely using. <sighs> Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Oh, it doesn't even matter. Oh, I'm ready. That's fine. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this oh! Dios mío de mi vida. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. 